605. First on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Anybody have anything they want to add or amend? I know I'm not going to make, um, I have a few items I'd like to bring up, but we'll probably just do it under other business for now. And then if we want to move forward with it, then we can make it an agenda item next time. Okay. Uh, and then on the, on the executive session piece, Lisa, we're going to add um, and one other personnel matter. After the evaluation of the town manager and one other personnel matter, and then it will stay per one BSA. Now, did anybody have anything else or anything you want to add? Or? <clears throat> okay, all in favor? Aye. Public comment inquiry. This is you got anything good? Don't, don't all speak at once, please. We'll talk over each other. It is awful, isn't it? You've been doing okay through COVID and good. It's been a while. I mean, we haven't had we haven't had a summer in a while with this many like hundred degree heat index days. You know. We'll move on. First on the agenda is the ordinance regulating control of garbage, trash, litter, and solid waste. And this was the proposal that we had brought <clears throat> brought forward to the voters on a non-binding resolution for town meeting day, um, which was overwhelmingly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, pass. I don't remember what the exact. I don't remember the exact. I know some people. Actually, the, the biggest complaint, the biggest complaint I got received after that, was that we didn't make it tough enough. So there was people who wished that we had dealt with cars. So we may do that in the zoning bylaws. So, um, but that was funny. That was the bigger thing. But yeah, we haven't changed the, anything since we put. The new cars. The state already has statute that deals with that. They do. Somewhat. They do somewhat, but you can also regulate it. Like you could say, uh, maybe in the village, you only want to have no more than three unregistered cars in certain districts. You could have more outside. So you can put tougher regulations on it. Yeah, they do, but it's hard to. But the, the small amount of feedback that we had during the process yep. was mostly on the, I'll, I'll say, metal scraps and automobiles and campers and things like that, where we didn't have any real kickback when it came to the trash litter, you know, biodegradable type items. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the, that's a good time to do it, yeah. Yeah. So, so I think, you know, we had, initially we were gonna start on this thing and probably realistically April, but with the whole COVID and Zoom meetings and, you know, kind of decided we'd put that on the shelf for a couple of months. Um, I don't know, I, uh, I only had one call this year in regards to some trash issues early on and Oscar went and took care of that. Um, actually spent a bunch of his time 
helping the oh, person yeah, take yeah, it. I think so. <laughs> so um, has anybody else really been met with that many calls this, no, this year? I did notice the town of uh, Royalton at the last one we the past, what they call a public health and nuisance ordinance. And it includes buildings, dilapidated buildings, building conditions, living conditions, if the place has been bunch of burnt out building up there on North Main Street, um, and also trash and litter. It's all part of their, their ordinance so that they just passed. It the so they went ahead and did an ordinance and without any public feedback? Yeah, yeah, no public feedback. There is a, a 30 day appeal period. Right, once we put it in the paper. Right. Once it's on the, the, the website oh. and everything. Yeah, so there's a 30 day uh, period with some of the petition. Right, yeah, there's a whole adoption period how long it goes in advance. Yeah, so if you go on that website, just huh. punch That's in good. public but I think and <laughs> public health and news. Yeah, because it becomes effective 60 days after it's adopted. And you have to we have to put a summation, a summary of it in the newspaper and there's a whole yeah. Big process to do it, but that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, I know your zoning regulations talk about talk about homes that have been um, something happened to them or something. I guess yeah. we they could have used maybe done something when the um, truck hit that house and then they didn't do anything about it. So yeah. I, mean, I found it. I guess they're waiting for insurance. We heard that's a big yeah. insurance hold up. But we do have some structures. It might be something we've talked about before. Remember the um, the barn structure that's up uh, Camp Brook Road on the right? Is that, um, yeah, just before Dunham we did some Sugar Hill? Right, Dunham. Dunham. It's right on the corner of Dunham Road. Oh. That I mean, that's been that's like half falling over. fallen yeah. in for probably 15 years or so now. Yeah. You know, those are the kind of liabilities waiting to happen. All it takes is a whatever kid to go playing there and it falls down or something. But we do yeah, have some of those. We'd have to look, because I know the zoning ordinance talks about it. And I just remember reading it once, I don't know, a few months ago, maybe. But when we had the house and down down by the river there before yeah. McCullough bought it. Yeah, but it wasn't. I think it was more, I, I need to say, I'd have to reread the zoning. I can't recall the whole wording. But it certainly wasn't all encompassing. And it gets tough, because mm -hmm. who's going to enforce it? Who's going to inspect yeah, them? Yeah. Who has them? But by statute, the fire chief can actually put, like well, he did the house after the um, truck hit it. He went, he met with the fire marshal, and the fire marshal said, you're the fire chief, you can. So he ended up having to do some sort yeah, of controversy. Part of the, the, the officers. Yeah. There's, there's a zone, I guess there's a zoning guy in, in the Yeah, office. sure. Mm -hmm. you know, they can go look, the fire chief yeah. can get involved. But it's any building that's uninhabitable. Yeah. There's a series of, of regulations and there's a, a process they have to go through mm -hmm. inspections and enforcement and, wow. and all that stuff. It's something you might want to look at at some point, but we have some more basic ordinances yeah, and right. policies that need to be addressed before I want to tackle anything. They so, like that word. Well, they, they do, and it's like, when? I don't, yeah. I don't well, it was scary, you know, what was that? Yeah. Probably, uh, well, maybe as much as two years ago, mostly the past year of all the ordinances that we've had. I mean, remember like the fee schedules and stuff of yeah. like, this charging $25 oh, for this I that know. really cost the town like hundreds of dollars. Or, I know, you know, it's crazy. It's just been so long since things have been updated. And it's true, because yeah, I remember, right, because I remember saying, I'm like, what do you charge to charge black? Like, no way, you know, like, do you know how long it takes us to do that? So we went through and I know personnel they, policies and all those. Oh, things. and that yeah. one is still yeah. bad. It was we wrong. Just, just to do it. Sure. I so mean, we got to get through them all. I think once we get them all rewritten, right. yeah. then we're good. Then we can go look at them. Yeah. Yeah. The, the fee yeah. schedule, you're right, which has to be looked at every year. I mean, all your policies, like Mo was saying, should be looked at once a year. Yeah. Doesn't mean you got to do anything with them, but yeah. once over them and. I should have Kelly made the two years ago, the policies we changed change for the rate. Two more years, you know, next year, that might not be enough. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah things, I mean, things change all the time. I mean, it's who true. knows what will happen with the pandemic thing, you know, but yeah. maybe well, maybe there's a piece of that that has to get put to a personnel policy at some yeah. point, you know. Yeah. Uh, no, and all the, all the You know, I mean, yeah, and our personnel We don't know what's coming, you know. No, it's true. I so. agree. 
So tonight is really just to um, to entertain a motion to adopt the the ordinance of regulating control of the garbage, trash, litter, and solid waste that was brought before the taxpayers on town meeting day and sign that and then start the process of the calendar for uh, feedback and then and then moving yeah, forward you posted, with that. So. Basically the only, it, it comes effect in the 60 days of your adoption. There's a process we have to follow and it's only if you get a petition of X amount of people to do this process. So right now if we adopt it, it doesn't well, have effect for 60 days. Right, you got 60 days. days waiting period if anybody contests that. Yep. Okay. So we'll go for sure. Okay. All in favor? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll have to sign this one. I mean, even though it took us longer to do this policy than, let's say, Royalton, but you know, we got a lot of feedback into it as we well. Did. It we wasn't made a bunch well, of not, changes. That's good and good feedback. Yeah, yeah. So that's but it's not the board's policy, it's the town's policy, you know. And, well, I mean, and that's the thing is you can bring all the policies you want forward, but if you don't have buy in to the, the citizens of the town, then what's your policy really worth? I mean, they could just say, How are you going to enforce that? I'll do whatever I want, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is the Oh, gotcha. Well, who said we're signing that? I'm just giving it to you. Brady's got some comments we're bringing up tonight. <laughs> the discrimination stops now. Take that up with That's between him and the governor. Yeah. Between him and the governor. Yeah. Any further discussion on the, we'll call it the trash ordinance? And then next up was the civil ordinance for dogs. And this is, you'd looked at this before already during COVID yeah. and nobody had any, yeah. I don't think anybody had any feedback or changes, so. I have a question though. Of course. I've got a little more close. Oh good. What do you got? Well that might not be good. No, it is good. Under definitions, number six, impoundment means being held by the town of Bethlehem at a place designated by the select board. Yep. Such place may or may not be operated by the town and may not be within the town limits. Right, because you currently, um, we don't have a pound, so we currently contract with the um, okay. with the okay. Country okay. Animal Hospital, and now it's a royal okay. thing. I, I understand that, but what if I wanted to start the dog and down the dog? Then, then it says it may or may not be within the town. So no, we could work no it just says may not. Oh, because we could work it out um, <coughs> with you. I mean, it's unlikely, but. Um, I know, I know. I just, I was reading this. No, it says, um, it says such place may or may not be operated by the town. Oh, and may not be within town. I think you're still good. It may not be within town limits. It may be. Yeah, no, I got you. I think we're. Not a wind quibble, just one way and then a different way. I'll tell you it's not worth the house. We used to run a pound. Can we go a the waiver? You did go over the waiver. Let's go over that again. You got, oh, okay, I was oh, like, the amount. The options are <clears throat> lack of current license, first offense, written warning, no fee. Right. Okay, second offense, 100 bucks, fee, waiver fee. What, what reduces it from 100 to 50? You guys did at your last select board meeting when we talked about this. So a waiver is, you know, what, like, say that say the officer, the constable, or whoever made a deal with them, like makes their waiver fee, say they go to court and um, maybe oh, the so person... So if you just roll, you know, if you just say they'll be... Uh, right, they can charge... The fee instead of going through the whole... Yeah, it says the enforcement officer is authorized to recover a waiver fee in lieu of a civil penalty okay. in the stated amount for any person who declines to contest a municipal complaint and pays right. the waiver. So kind of the express. Yep. So it's like, yeah, they, that's right. 
the express. That's a good way to put it, Chris. Yeah. Yeah. If you, you say you did it and you pay the fee, you move on. Okay. I mean, I don't know. These dogs nowadays are so smart. They they could probably just be, you know, <laughs> you know, independent and on their own. I don't think yes. they need owners. I know. Yeah, yeah I I think they're more than capable. They should, they should license us. Yeah, I'll tell you, the one I got, the top I got, is smarter than any dog I've had before. <laughs> yeah. She was just on top of it. We, <laughs> she, we saw her, she's cute. We had one, and she, that dog, all he had to do was watch the kids twice, and he figured out how to push yeah. open the lazy Susan with his head, twice. and was getting whatever, <laughs> whatever he wanted, crackers, Whatever. <laughs> the are super smart. You get ice out of the refrigerator on the door, you know? Yeah. You get the noise of that ice. Gee, what a shot. Oh. You let out like one day one. <laughs> they do, do. It's outside, amazing how fast they catch on. Outside, outside, you've got two days of the dump. Yeah. Mine, mine pushes the window down in the truck, so he can put his head out the window. <laughs> <laughs> they have to hit the childproof one. <laughs> or when he gets home, he hits the button and the trash goes up and puts his head in there. You know, ah. he's got it all figured out. They're smarter than us. It's kind of scary. <laughs> it's really sad. Yes. Yeah. Yes. They yeah. Yes. I have a little better self-control than he does, but <laughs> yeah, exactly. he's pretty smart. <laughs> no, no. I usually keep my head out of the trash, but. <laughs> so I guess we would uh, entertain a motion uh, to adopt the civil ordinance for dogs. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Man's best friend. <laughs> uh, and next, uh, the draft highway access policy. This is, I gave you the existing one and the newer draft that there's obviously for some issues with the older one and it was pretty old as Mo pointed out. I think he one of the guys who signed it, I don't think. Yeah, I know he no, signed no, no, no. Is he still around? Are you one of the originals? <laughs> he is. He signed it in 88. The original adoptee. Yeah. So I try, the the VLCT policy was I mean this is pretty in detail and I even cut that down to the, the pages, the approval pages, because, um, so they have the application, which is great, that's all similar to what we have now, but then that one that says highway access permit curb cut, another tab did this on the side, I like this, instead of a smaller, like a whole other page, where basically we go out and make sure they comply, because Alan and I did a curb cut application um, on Christian Hill the other day, and <clears throat> so I went through the whole process with Alan, and also, too, we weren't giving out people, even though it said it here, people were not getting, which they should have, uh, the B B71 or A76 standards, so which are here. So that goes with it now. And um, so we went out and did it. We did, you know, site distance. We did, it has to be level for 25 feet. And so we met with gentlemen and said, okay, these are your things that don't meet. So we told them and said, you know, when you're done, call us. Alan will come back with his wheel and he's going to re-inspect. So that was fine, and um, that's fine. You know, we didn't. We, 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 we will. He'll have. To, you know, so it's fine. We'll, well go back. I hope you have that. I have out a list of things that I want to go over on this too. Let's hope we can start. We have some years of teeth in the old. One. Yeah, there is, which I didn't so, think there was, but we, there is. I mean, I think there's really been no oversight on it. There hasn't. Been. When I was doing the FEMA jobs last <laughs> year, like. Um, Sanders Road, for example, I was trying to figure out how we could best move the water down the hill coming past the quarry and down. But there's like three or four houses on the bottom end of that hill that don't have any, you know, when they put their houses in there, you know, they didn't put in a driveway culvert, didn't do any of that stuff that no. should have been done. Mm -hmm. But I don't think anybody's really been out there policing it to make sure that no. they did what they're supposed to do. You know? Well, and the thing is, too. Yeah, because it was like three or four houses that didn't even have a single culvert that well, goes under it. So it's I like will tell you, water, we, you know? that the couple that I have encountered so far, um, we have 
gone back, they had a permit, and, and the owner even said, yeah, I went in, they got a permit, nobody ever came to tell me anything, they just signed off on it, it was really the honor system. And um, so I asked Alan how many curb cut applications he had done. He'd done one with Greg, um, he did one recently, this may be only four. So certainly that he's done, so certainly that is the process now, is that I went with him because he had done one with me. I'm like, okay, did you do this? And he's like, no, or that. I'm like, okay, we're going to go together so you can see what we have to do. So that was kind of the spark for the new access policy. It had been kind of in draft for a while on my computer. But as far as going back and getting old ones, I just, I can't. I don't have time to do that. But moving forward, this is what we're going to do. And this requires people that they have to sign up on it. I also think, you know, we, it should be more than... Twenty-five bucks, two. You, you know, with the fee schedule. Twenty-five dollars, really? And I don't, the, the amount isn't the amount isn't in here, right? It just yeah, it is. oh, I thought it said set by. The application for access. Oh, okay, because that's the current fee. Well, that's the current fee because you guys haven't updated your um, fee schedule. So once we do that, we could change it. That's no big deal because it's just on the. Um, application but it's not in the policy i think it no, was yeah policy. yeah they're only charging 25 bucks and we're not even charging a recording fee right now so we should be charging you know plus recording so once we do the fee schedule we can change it that would be a minor because it does say in the policy that the fee is to be set from time to time by the select board so oh you darn too there's some things of yours that need to be fees, the whole fee schedule needs to come back but We'll do that. At a later date. Yeah, and you're gonna end up. You're gonna have two. You're gonna have two because you need to see the application. You need to go out, meet the homeowner, and say, "I require that you have a culvert that it's this big. That you you have to be level with the road, 25 feet. You have to have a site visit. So there's gonna be two visits. So yes, I agree. We need to up the. Road. Maybe, I, I don't know. I mean, well, if the road foreman goes and they, what do we, should, we could make them sign off on it, um, the person that they agree yeah, okay, to the well, thing, well. if that's in here. Owner signature applicant, so they just do the application. And then when we come out, we he writes all the terms on it, gives it to him, and then he comes back and does the certificate of compliance. So honestly, he could be out there three times. Yeah. Because meeting, you know, going over, or meeting and going over with him would be one, I guess. And then he'd go back to do two for so it needs to be at least 50 bucks. Um, I was showing that the uh, building director of the fire chief was the green village. Yeah, it could be. You know, sometimes the reason you want the fire chief is if somebody decides they're going to build a new development, the fire chief is going to want to make sure that within that PUD, that proposed unit development, that planned unit development, that they have a turnaround for, for fire trucks and things. That would so, be a separate thing. Well, yeah, he'd like he'd be going yeah, to make sure looking at it. So yeah. not necessarily just in the village, but the utility director, yes, right. just in the village. But for the That's what I was Yeah, the but for fire the village or outside of. And and we may not need it. A lot of them you don't, but there's times when and if we change the zoning regulations to say they have to get the curb cut act location and any necessary, you know, if there has to be a visit from the utility director or fire chief, we're giving them an opportunity. Do that. Well, I guess, you know, looking at it, I mean, if you're going to, like, fee-wise, if we're trying to capture what the cost is to do something like yeah. that, currently it says 25 plus $10 recording yeah. fee. So I guess we'd have to figure, you know, if it's going to take a person or two, two visits to go out there, how much time it would they like have in, you know, months. would they have an hour one time, an hour two, would you have two hours invested not, into that? Probably not. And then two mean, hours is what? Yeah, right. Well, that's the thing, and then, and then you know, is a ten dollar recording fee is that ad adequate for processing the paperwork? Well, the, the recording fee is, is is to record in the land records, and that's a set fee by statute. How much per oh, page? Oh, you can't charge any more than how much per is? page? No, you've got to build your other costs into the other. Page. Gotcha. So, but it but, just goes along with some of those other ones that we. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Where it just, might cost us $100 and we only charge it $25. Yeah, I just made a note for the fee schedule, so I'll make a note okay. to bring the fee schedule back. But anyway, so it's just in draft. I was hoping, <clears throat> I don't know if you guys saw anything in here. I'd like to get to it in draft, then we can talk about it, then we can put it on for another time for adoption. Um, 
Yeah, exactly. And I got this one, you know, from BLCT. They have a lot of model policies, and then you kind of. I did notice, yeah, I guess the only comment I had on it other than the fee structure was it clearly there's an issue date of when the permit's issued. But maybe there ought to be not necessarily something on here, but maybe in the notes section, you know, that the owner anticipates to have it completed by a certain date so that okay. so proper follow up is done. Okay, that's good. It's a date of or date of or you just the uh, permit expires and no, nine, right, or you have 60 days to do it or 30 days I to do think, it. I think, well, it says on here. It's an expiration of one year. I was going to say there's usually an expiration of a year to get it done. It says to what Chris is saying, like they do an anticipated completion date, then right. maybe within a month or two. Right. Yeah, I can put that anticipated completion date. And, and it, it, you know, it could be either a line item on here, or it could just be something that in the notes section. I think it'd be good if there was a line. We make sure item people put that on there. This is when we'll have it done by. Yeah, I think it's a. I'm assuming that when you do the zoning, you're going to get this so that it's going to be approved before they can start construction on it, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, that, that, that hasn't been the case. It should be already in. Right. It's in the order. Right. No. I don't. I don't think that's what it says. Or maybe it said something different in zoning. I feel like there was something about it that said. Is that what you were noting, um, Lindley, that that the permit currently has a one-year expiration date? Yeah, section eight. Yeah, saw that. That's you know, a completed application must be submitted to the town manager at least thirty days before work is scheduled to begin. Right, well that I do, yeah, that part. And it says the property owner and the owner's agent shall notify the town of Bethel a minimum of two days oh, in advance you know of work activity. I'm getting confused between, because the person I saw had also a zoning permit and had a curb cut. So it was the zoning permit that allowed you to start construction, um, to start some of the, the, the zoning process allows you to start some of the excavation. So that's where I'm getting confused. So the zoning permit said you could start your excavation. Um, the curb cut says, yeah, you shouldn't do the curb cut without a permit. And then obviously we call, you know, we dealt with him. And he, and he knew that. And he knew that from the get-go. He, he chose not to. So there is in Section 5, it's 5D, there's a notification of completion. Applicant shall notify the town manager's officer will only within yep. 15 days after construction is completed. Yep. Which is plenty of time. Not yeah, like, yeah, I'm just wondering if that was a place in the place or what Chris was suggesting of like actually having it. Oh, uh, well, you know, it just I think even just if we had an estimated completion day, we could put on our calendar to say Kelly, right. Trees, Al, yeah, somebody check in with Lindley because she's putting in a curb cut. They watch her all the time. <laughs> so <laughs> words every day. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I and I think the the big issue oh. wasn't that we didn't have policy. It was just more there was no enforcement of. Yeah. The activities. So. Well, and we also, yeah, and we had right. Moet brought up some changes to things we needed to do, but yeah, you forgot to sign the dog. Oh, sorry. Gotcha. Um, so, yeah, if there's any changes, though, let me know. And then um, we'll all put it back on the next agenda for adoption if you're all good with it. Any further discussion on the highway access policy? Mm -hmm. All right. Moving along. Capital Road Plan. 
So this, I feel, so this is a great start, I think. We've got the capital equipment plan underway, so I tried to make some notes in here, obviously, what we currently have, and then here we put in Spooner Road. Uh, I have, I, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm getting quotes on paving East Bethel Bridge. I put in $20,000. I have no idea. I don't know, pavement. It could be ten, but I doubt it. I'm probably sure. No, short. you should be able to do it for... I'm probably sure. Sure. Thank you. Well, let's hope. Well, I'm hoping that so I'm gonna. I'm supposed to get an estimate this week. The guy, uh, the gentleman, uh, was gonna be there on Thursday, I think. So I threw that in here. Um, then you can see I was confused last time. I Chris had sent me an email about putting something back to gravel, and I had it in my head it was Christian Hill. And then I'm typing away, and then I reread his email, and up at the subject it says Gilead. I'm like, yeah. right in church on you. So I switched that around. Chris has an estimate on, we think he did, he did an estimate for me on Christian Hill, but neither, I haven't found it yet. Yeah, I'll, I'll look. So I tried to put some notes on the under the section, because if we were to tear up that part of Gilead and put it, back to gravel, what we had talked about was leaving about a 150 foot apron, um, that way when you're coming off and then, because otherwise if we were going to do it all and do it right, it would be $200,000. And also kind of looking, talking with the, the folks that have lived on that road for, well not everybody, but a well, fair... We, we talked uh, to Derek, right? Yeah, yeah, and talked to a few others that lived out there. Well, some of them couldn't understand why they paved it to begin with. And then others had talked about that there was some sort of the state was pushing for a paved roads back, well, I don't know, yeah. 15, 20 years at ago least. or something. Yeah, and they didn't do any like sub base prep to it. All they did is they just came in and just paved it the way it is, and that's probably why it's falling apart. Um, and it sounded like that a majority of the people that lived out there didn't want it paved to begin with. So now, to, to correctly repave that stretch of road, you know, it was like $200,000. Um, or we could just chew it up back to gravel and, you know, for, what did we say? 45. 45, but it'll probably be less than that, you know, and and then um, chew it up, put it back to gravel, and then we'll just, it'll be an extra, was it a mile and a yeah, half or something? Like, yeah. Be an extra mile and a half, we'll have to do maintenance with gravel, but it's a lot cheaper than spending $200,000. It's not that there. It's pretty easy to get yeah. it and the issues are, it's just pop hole in the pieces, so it's... It's all flat road. Yeah, for the majority, yeah. So that was kind of one, and then, yeah. and then you know, we have the Christian Hill piece, which is, you know, it's challenging because of the section of that, there's a couple of sections that are really bad. One of the worst sections is right, right near the Cherry Hill lane area, right, Cherry Lane? Yeah, someone said that the... The ditching there is all gone, where it was yeah. really bad, and they're you know they're thinking that it's wet up there, and that maybe it's there's obviously supposedly last time they did it, you guys would know that they dug it up, and put in some drainage, and mm -hmm. rebuilt the sub base and everything, but it's still it's it's awful. Yeah. I they just put some fabric down. Was it in the 80s? No. 80s? Uh-uh. Well, no, it's been down since then. But the original one, they laid fabric in the drainage in. Yeah. And the fabric they didn't even overlap. Yeah. You know, they just laid fabric. One half the world they laid fabric, and then they dug up the other half, laid fabric, and the clay. Don't forget that. Yeah. Now it's a thousand 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 no, 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 I got paid. Uh, and it was holding, you know, I mean, I was coming and I couldn't believe because all it was is they ground it up, put it back down, and it sprayed the. They probably got paved around like 2004 or 2005. They sprayed the tarp, and they yeah. sprayed it, and they scraped the install, and they drove over it, and the thing, that just lasted and lasted and lasted and then it yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess my, my recommendation for that road right now would be to that it's, it's almost exactly a mile of paved road is what I would recommend is because it is to the point where 
it's becoming a safety issue in the winter time because the plows obviously can't plow the wheel ruts that are this deep. So there's ice that sits in there and um, would be to take it back to dirt. And instead of spending, uh, what do we have on that I one? I don't have Christian Hall in here. Because I think, I didn't know if I remember right, I think we were talking like 225000 or something. Maybe. Take it to dirt for, you know, probably forty or 50000 And then in around the Cherry Hill area, that section there, there's some drainage that needs to be done. So spend a little money on some ditching, some drainage work. And then we could always repave that when we have an opportunity to get a grant down the road, you know. But I think right now, because we can only get a grant like every three years. Three to five years. And the Sand Hill piece, if we do the utility work. Yeah, you saw that number. We worked through all and of And then numbers. that obviously would have to be paved. Um, yeah. Would probably be better suited money than right now than to repave Christian Hill. Um, because we'd have to wait another three years, so it'd be six years out, you know. Exactly, and I tried to do that with structures grants. The other thing we need to put in here, Chris, that we don't have is, I have the one just at Camp Brook of a small area, but we need to do more, you know, there's sections of Camp Brook. So we need yeah. to add paved roads to this and try I to- I say the Camp Brook stuff. I think, so. yeah, that I did. Camp Brook, there's, I divided it into four sections on Camp Brook, and each section is a little bit different um, method of and you know there's there's over two million dollars to work from tip to toe over you know let's say a 10 to 15 year cycle you know so that's it's a lot of money for our town in that time and all we've been doing the last you know probably 10 years is just throwing money up there that we're not getting out of the, the lowest section, the bottom section, I think the bottom one was a bottom mile or two. Yeah. That's the worst section right now that probably would have to be done next. What's the life expectancy of pavement? The state of Vermont says 11 years right now. Mm -hmm. so. I think that's about right. And, it, you know, of course, that depends on oh, all sorts of things. how your winners are yeah. and what kind of, you know, like Christian Hill, what kind of tra yeah. traffic's on that or... Mm -hmm. So, uh, flood events, you know, that always yeah. into normal So we, we yeah. put in the, so what we may end up having to do right now is pave East Bethel Bridge, which will last me to get another structures grant. I have the structures grant in the hopper for water yeah, watershed. Watershed. I always want to say woodlands. I'm like, no, watershed. Not, not I know, I just, those two. So watershed, and um, so I was trying to count out how long. So if we paved, I've had two state people, I've had a contractor, I've had, and the thing about East Bethel Bridge is if you pave, it buys us time because as you can see, it needs a lot of work because they actually need to hold back the river because there's some issues with the actual abutment. So that's why the price tag of that is maybe 20 now and 375,000 later, but it's, you know, we need that structures grant. And then I was thinking the next one, if we wrote Sand Hill, we could, I think the most you can get, I think is 175,000 out of the paving grant with a 30% match. So, and I didn't, as you can tell, I put the full amount of the work, but I put, if I thought we could get, we could get a paving grant, I put that up top as a revenue. I think I had, um, I took your number and added it to Tim's. That's how I got the, the sand hill piece. Yeah. The, it's expensive because it's all, the ter yeah. Well, what, it's what not, the, it's waterline. It's, it's less than 200, wasn't it? Tim's? No, yours. To take it to dirt, resurface yeah. the gravel, and pave yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, but we had, but we have to do all new stormwater, all new water line. So it's the some under drain, the sewer's going to be fine, but the ditch, yeah, it's a whole. That road so, should have been tended to a little. So I'll write the paving grant when it comes out, but that's. I mean, so you have like stormwater drains that they're in people's lawns you know there are areas that aren't catching anything or right next to another one that was it's, abandoned it's, yeah, 30 years before that and it's not good. it's a mess so if we did so this year i put in uh spooner obviously east bethel bridge paving it the next year to work for a sand did, hill paving we, grant next year we'll do um you know maybe we do gilead and then I did put in, I threw in the Gilead box culvert, but I have to request a hydraulic study. I just threw a number at it. 
<laughs> and then um, I'm not sure how far they're behind on their paving grants, but the next time it comes out, I will apply, and you can do Sand Hill. But obviously, it's not tomorrow. And then Chris will get us information or get find the email. I swear you gave it to me. If I so are we going to uh, put the money and maybe do the infrastructure one year and do the gravel for it over there? We probably just. Not on, we don't want to. Like Sand Hill, we'd probably tackle the utilities and it would be probably temporarily patched, paved for that year. Because if you take it to gravel, anytime it rains, you're going to have that erosion coming all the way down onto Church Street. And it'll be a mess at that little three way intersection there. I mean, do you see, like, even like right now, just with a little bit that they're doing on the water line project, anytime it rains, it goes down by the fish. You know, that's just a little bit of gravel, you know. But I, I would envision, you know, there'll be some cross cuts in the pavement and then there'll probably probably be seven sections on one side of the road or the not that where the water line runs. Yeah. Which I think if you're going up, it runs on the left side. I think so. The water line. Um, and then I think you just temporarily patch it. And then the following year, you the next year you come in, take it to dirt, resurface with your gravel, do whatever ditching and stuff that you need to do and then pave it. But it, it really all right now comes down to Water. if we think we can get a paving grant in the next couple of years. <clears throat> yeah. Well, they, they're out or they yeah. put them out. I, I don't know what the schedule is now. So obviously I'll find We'd out. We'd want to do the utility work the year prior to that. Mm -hmm. Which the utility work, unless there's some sort of grant there, would probably be 100% on us. Which is hard. But that being said, I'm assuming you all saw my number one bulletin of good news. Are you getting more money for was that the galvanized money? Or? No, this is. This is, this is yes, because, yeah, we, we included, because I think I told you guys a while ago, I mentioned that we might, that I had, we, read, we had to send some comments, Alder Elliott did, that they had some federal money left, and so he had uh, advocated for us, and then he sent something, and so this is good news, because the less that is, then with the sooner, if we had to go back and look at how we're going to pay for Sand Hill. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not crippling too because we have Sand Hill, don't forget. And when we do Sand Hill, if we're going to do something with money for Sand Hill for the utilities, we're going to have to deal with Crystal Drive at the same time. So if we get a bond, if we have another payment that we're going to have to deal with, it's got to be Crystal Drive and Sand Hill because Crystal Drive has a clock on it because of the state. So if we were going to upgrade and do both, because so the less we spend now, it doesn't mean we're going to spend it later. Um, we're going to spend it later. What was that? I don't. I don't remember. I don't. I don't. I don't you know what? I had that idea. Well, two point eight. We always knew it was. Well, we were. Portion of that one point seven. Right. One point four. I mean, we bonded for two point eight. I think the yeah. idea at that time was what we called the guaranteed money was that that was going to lead us down to like 1.2 or 1.1 or, one one or something. I thought it was but then there was the galvanized money and there was the potential so of another one that we weren't counting. Right. But the rates were based on... Yeah, we already got the 0%, you know, 50%. Right. So they they're do it funny. They don't say it's 75%. They say this is 50 and this is 25. This yeah. is, they don't add them together. They say they're portion. So... Um, but, so luckily we got some more money because, honestly, what we don't spend now, we're going to end up spending on infrastructure somewhere else, but we still need to do Crystal Drive. And then we haven't figured out uh, what we're going to pay uh, for. This, this project, the, 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 the coming, this is the same as the This is a, a right. it's user going to pay for this It job. is. And the users are also going to pay for Sand Hill. And we have well, to, some of it. Some of it. Just well, the Sand water Hill. portion. Yeah, but Sand Hill, like, because it doesn't need sewer. To a majority water. of that's going to be storm water. Yeah, but it's going to be. We have to. And then all if the we, well, paving grant will pay for. Yeah, planning. You know, yeah. paving grant will pay for whatever eighty percent of it. Mo, do you want me to get that? Okay. Oh yeah. But, but there's quite a bit of storm water on Sand Hill that have to get done. That that will be all on us. So that's the that's just amazing. Water portion of that will most likely be on the users, and yeah. we have not decided or put a number as do we need to get done this project before we can come to 
something on Crystal Drive and throw right. over at that and then figure out how we're going to pay for that. If that's going on the users or a FNAF, we don't know yet. I think looking at so, it, we have a pretty good handle on the projects that need to get done. Well, I mean, I added... Except the, for the, the animal that we haven't even figured out a work in there yet is going to be, you know... Camp Brook. Really Camp Brook. Yeah, I mean, and Camp I Brook is a... A money pit that's I also, never going to end. We also need to put four times in my life. Yeah. yeah I, well, the problem you have is you have sections. Well, you have sections that weren't maintained for a long time. <laughs> you know, water's gotten under the pavement. There's been whatever countless floods up there, and every time you know you puzzle piece the pavement together, it's just you know getting worse. And I wish the town never had taken that from the state, <laughs> but. But it, you know, it's a big animal. It's like you know, we figured there's about a little over two million dollars worth of maintenance on a let's say let's say you stretch it to a 15 year cycle. Two million dollars in 15 years. That doesn't even count all this other stuff that we're talking. That's it's a um, big ticket item. And I'm not even sure I have all the other stuff in there. I mean, I put in the Chris the Gillian yeah. row, the box culvert that I knew about. I don't have a number. I threw a number at it but I need to get the hydraulic study done. Um, but yeah, there's, there's, I'm sure there's other stuff. I'll just sit down with Alan and see what else he knows about that needs to go on here. I have to list all the paved roads. Every village road needs to go on here. And you know, uh, to figure that- You do paved. have the pavement. You do have the study that was put together, right? The study? There's a paved road. Okay, it's probably um, on the shelf. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, we hired, yeah, okay, we hired somebody with a grant that put that together for us. Okay. I mean, you know, what? there's it's a lot of good information, the but there's some information that it, uh, needs uh, to be updated. But okay, they had a they had a good sequence of the work that they thought okay. at that time. Well, I will find it. It's probably on. You know, Sand Hill was in there. I don't think Christian Hill was. Well, I don't think it was on there to be done yeah. so soon. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, so what we'll do is add that in there, but is there anything else that anybody else has thought of that we, if you, I guess put it this way, if you think of a project that we've talked about that I've forgotten that's not on here, just send me an email and let me know what that is. Um, and we'll, I just would like to get this to be more, you know, just like we did with the equipment and, and um, to have some real numbers. And I think the one thing that's been missed has been the bridges. Yes. Um, well, I'm and any all type of large box culvert type structure. Yep, you know? that's a good idea. I'll add all the bridges and any box culverts. Because as we're finding, you know. Yes, we are. I mean, all the watershed like, bridge is is what it is. East the East Bethel. Bethel one, and East Bethel is not an easy fix because there's only one way in and out of there unless you want to upgrade the Oxwell. Yeah. You know, unless you want to upgrade that. Uh, Crazy. Too passable, <laughs> you yeah. know, to get people through there. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll there. yeah true. And in, and in pretty much the bridge contractors that Teresa's talked to so far has said, basically said, in order to fix the bridge permanently, we need to close the bridge for a period of time so we can, you know, you can't really like detour cars around it or put yeah. a temporary he bridge. Just, finally, they said, look, we can do this in two lanes, but it's going to cost you more money. I said, yeah. I don't have a choice. I can't get a, I call the fire chief, I cannot get a fire truck down Oxbow. And then my, what are my odds? I leave a fire truck on the other side. You know, well, can't pump out of the brook right there? Could, but you can't cross, you can't get the fire truck down Oxbow. Yeah. Awesome. I'm just telling you what he said, mm -hmm. safely. It, it's a, it's a tough one truck. because it's, yeah. a, it's a tough area. But if it's a house fire, right what are you gonna do? Well, I know, but still, if you can only get the little truck. Wow. The other, the other thing, not to off that, but this parking lot out here will have to get done relatively soon. If not, you'll be in a complete rebuild at some point. Okay, so we'll add this multiple. So especially now that we use this parking lot more, so you know, so for the okay, I'll add downtown. Did I read somewhere? Did I read? Are talking about taking that rid of? And yeah. yeah, they're taking them out. They're in the process right now. If it's not so out. that's time, it should be a little easier to work on that bridge. No water back there. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, down the road. You're right, because the bridge is down a little further. Yep. We're but it's still. Yeah. Well, so the we thing is, yeah, it. it's just tricky because it. Yeah, no, I know. 
it'll change. He told me a little bit about it, Greg Russ, when I talked to him about it. Um, but yeah, so we'll add the bridges to this and we'll just try to get a really long, you know, just more detail. And, but if you can think of a bridge, or not a bridge, I got all the bridge inspection parts, but um, all, any like box culverts or anything that's large that you can think of that you know, you know, it's not a culvert that we can do, but if it's something bigger, then just email me and I'll make oh, sure. Do you have any of those three, four, five foot culverts out there still? Um, yeah, she got a couple on. I think Cooper Hollow, believe it or not, down there. Cooper Hollow's got a lot of new infrastructure in there. Cooper Hollow, yeah. Yeah, right. Well, I took I drive there. There's a lot of new stuff out there. I know there is. Well, we got we got grants for um, three big sections of new Cooper Hollow. Cooper Hollow's got a whole four on it. Excuse me? Cooper Hollow's got a four on it. Yeah. Yeah. And I would also just say if we end up. You know. Oh, you know, I can look at the culvert worksheet. They have Vermont culverts, VT culverts. I'll see yeah. it. I'll look for big ones. I mean, if we do end up replacing like watershed bridge and things like that, we should just go with a concrete deck, no pavement over it, just concrete. Yeah. And overall, it's better. Yeah. No, I agree. That was a we had this deck. old conversation. I talked to Spencer ha Howard and I talked to Chris Bump about it, and he went out and looked at yeah. it at. Uh, East Bethel, and he's like, Ooh. I'm like, yeah, it's in a tough location. It is a tough, tough location, tough location. And, and I feel bad for the and, people. And I mean, that thing is ancient, too. Yeah, I mean, yeah the 50s between the, the curb style and the cable rail and stuff, that's that's 40s. I mean, yeah, that's, they I haven't think, done that stuff in no. a long time. It, it is older. But it's funny, once you do that, I mean, there's some things to be done, but once we do that, it should be in good shape. Oh, it should last a very long time. Yeah. yeah. So, but unfortunately, you know, the big one we have, with, let us not forget, is Peavine. That bridge is going to be pricey. Oh, that's going to be good for another hundred years. Yeah, I'm sure. You're Just replace some that. lumber on it. Yes. Set the well, we actually, we, actually, Just keep actually, it lumber. we do need to replace some planks, and we're supposed yeah. to do that this summer, but replace I can't lumber. even imagine the tag on that. But the good steel structure wise, that steel. You was can, there. and you. The good thing is, we can close that, so yeah. people can drive it around as a detour. It, it if used you had to. to right. It used to be that your bridge match from the state was less. Maybe it's only five percent instead of ten or twenty. If you can close it, that's what it yeah. used to be. But I think they've changed that. Who knows? Now that the state is in financial down. straits, we might mm -hmm. they might be keeping mm -hmm. all their matches. Keep it steel with wooden plank on. I don't know, I have to look at the inspection, but we did look at it about changing the planks, but I thought, oh, oh that's going to be, that's going to have a big tag, price tag on it. I asked Chris Mungo, I'm like, isn't that yours? And he chuckles, he's like, you wish. <laughs> and I know for a fact that's yours. Did we get that, did we get that, uh, uh, that's a double, did we get that low class, three class, five class, two? He bought? I don't know, I'd have to look at the down at. I always Did chuckle because that, that little paved section is not that close to white. Oh, so, oh, it goes out across the field? It's not even right. And then did you notice how offset, how offset the center line is? It's, the first time I drove it, I'm like, chain. is this me? Or like, you know, it's got to be a man mandatory. Yeah. I had not been drinking. And it was, I was 11 like. 11 and 2 to make. So 13. It's got to be 26 feet wide to yeah. be minimum. Oh, and there's no way it's probably not greater than 20. It's so weird. Yeah. It's funny. And then, like I said, then with the offset center line, is when you get past the the bridge and the park, how the center line is in the center. <laughs> like, Oops. Okay, that's a little weird. <laughs> well, he laughed. Yeah. All right, so. Um, you need a center line to have uh, That's right. That thing is about that wide, too. So, all right, we will do, we'll add some work to this. Chris is going to look for the emails and then send them to me. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Audit, you should send me the camp. But I mean, ideally, maybe on the road-wise, you know, if not next year, if not next year, the year after at the latest to start the utility work on Sand Hill. Yeah. It depends on the pay. We need the Right. It depends rails. on when you can get a pay if you can get a paving That's grant. the way so. it all, and that will juggle the but, whole schedule is once you get a paving yeah. grant, you'll know. So, I, I agree. So, all right. But that's good. So, thank you. And like I said, if you think of anything, email me and so I can make sure I don't miss it. But I'll do some research on Vermont culverts and the bridges and stuff. Does anyone write to inform us soon? 
I know. It is. I've already looked at that with the state when we were I, we were hoping to um, go in after the flood and do some riprap work around there, but I know Chris didn't write, I was waiting for Chris Brumbaugh to ask because he didn't write it up, so. We also have a bigger problem if you go further up Camp Brook. Like if you mowed the grass, you would see it drops and there's that road right there, That some of that um, guardrails. And I, so we also talked about getting rid of the fire. Well, we We're going to do some ditching up there. All of our ditching money, I think, is going to stay on Camp Brook. We, Anything we can ditch on dirt with a, the grader. So I think we're going to use it on that and maybe install a culvert in front of Casey's and <coughs> Comstock because that water's got to be, you got to manage that water. But we should, you know, we should figure out something for paved, paved roads, gravel roads, and structures, you know. What the, what the total amount of maintenance money is divided yeah. by whatever, 15 years for paved roads or five years for gravel roads or yeah. 30 years for, you know, bridges. And, you know, and we should have a pot of money every year that goes towards that. You know, that's, that's, that's whatever. $100,000 goes to paving every year, but 20000 goes to gravel and I don't know. 30000 goes to bridges or something. Yeah. That's right. You know, because if we don't start it, then it'll never happen. And, you know, who knows how long everybody's here, and then all of a sudden it's <laughs> Groundhog Day all over again, 10 Forever. years from now, when they're talking about. What were they doing? We're all here. Look at all these paved roads that aren't even paved. Yeah. They're well, falling well, apart. What are, what are we going to do? And it's hard there? because the money, we were on a 99 year paving cycle for sidewalks mm -hmm. in Bristol. I could say, it just was what it was. You were only setting aside 20, 30, whatever the grid, and you were trying to, every year, we're just like, listen, we are never going to Well, get add this that done. to your list, too. We should have some sort of we had streetscape. Money. It was $1,000. What were well, you going to do with $1,000? Well, I'm just saying, dollars? because the sidewalk from, I mean, the sidewalk from the school up Pleasant Street is. Yeah. You know, I don't well, know. Uh, 20 years past its prime. Well, it's also, but you know what? You can get sidewalks. You might be able to get a four I'm trying to help you out, Dave. <laughs> yeah. You know what? You might But it's a matter of time. I mean, the downtown sidewalks are starting. You, you're seeing it. Yeah. Um, I mean, the only new sidewalk that we have is, you know, going up Church Street. And we need um, a veneer at the town office. But and you, some pieces out here in North Maine. But you might other be than able that, to get a safe routes to school grant do your sidewalk but we've done well we should support. put that we should have a pot of money every year okay. that if we figure the sidewalks are a 20-year cycle then how much money 20. a year are we put in? yeah well you were putting you know. in a thousand because i remember looking at the budget when i first it came and i'm it. like what are you doing with a thousand bucks you're gonna get like two we're still years. saving and no truncated domes because you can't afford that with a thousand bucks <laughs> it was sad so we'll add yeah. that in there too and then it'll be good we'll have a, just a it would be nice to have a very and they really yeah, should have. People can read that they can put in town and say, hey, our road is slated for you. Obviously, it's a plan, so things will change, but. Well, and years ago, we had a gravel program, but as the board's changed, that got shut down. Yeah. Well, yeah. we'll try to do something. And then maybe as the funds come in, can I don't know if it's easier to have the capital road fund and then you have. Subsections in that where that's what we did here. And you know, you have paved gravel, and you know, did you put your money in those spots, or do you have we can do that three here. separate or four separate accounts, or what? I think um, it'd be easier to do one because there's going to be times where you may need to rob Peter to pay for Oh, that's my point. Is we're yeah. robbing Peter all the time. Too. Yeah. Well, we can. Then we don't have sidewalks. Well, yeah. then here, then we could do it all under one, but we could do headers. Of, yeah. This is for bridges. This is for this. Okay. So subsections okay. that when the money's applied, it's in. Yeah. Okay. The account, you know. We can do that. <laughs> no, it's a good idea. Yeah, no, I just. No, you're right because there's time. You're right. That's what happens. I'm feeling right. overwhelmed. Anybody else feeling overwhelmed with this discussion? <laughs> All right. Because it's a hundred. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> yeah, it's because it's a hundred here, but yeah. Oh, maybe can, that's what it is. We can, um, but you're well. It's because there's a lot to be done. Yeah. That's oh, why yeah. it's. You're overwhelming. You're just telling me. I'm feeling <laughs> very overwhelmed right now. <laughs> just talking to me about it. <laughs> Yeah. I'm the one who's going to go look it all up. Oh, boy. Oh, this is the way this goes. All right, but that was very helpful, all those points. All right, town manager's report. All right, so let's see. I'm sorry, what? Building <laughs> has to have to.
the software um, thing. Well, and, um, you know, with just three of us being planning commission members, I, and I'm taking the minutes. It's, I don't have the I don't have the ability to to do both. And um, you know, is there any need for visual aids for this one? Like the last no. one, we had the river corridor and everything no. else that was. So we had you know visual. Yeah. Yeah. and stuff. And this one, it seems like you probably, regardless of what your platform is, we yeah. can probably get through it because it's not like you got like a big presentation. No, there's not might a big... be hard to hear or see. There's or, not a big presentation yeah. and, um, you know, I obviously... Is it out on the website? Do yeah. we have it on the website? It's been on the website. It's out. And, um, you know, certainly people have had a year, more than a year to comment on it. And um, we have certainly made other hearing, other meetings available and nobody has commented so yeah. you know it, it, I will say it becomes a little frustrating because we everything we do almost everything we do is public so and we don't you know if Geneva wasn't here tonight we'd be here alone as we are as we were for the most part with um, planning with zoom with site work you know we had Judy we had your wife, Doug. we had Doug, and we had Lindley, and we had, you know, Brady, and that was, that was our audience, you know? And um, so, I, you know, I'm open to it, but I can't manage it. So, uh, you know, and I emailed her back about a platform for, so people didn't feel cumbersome about filling in their comments about town plan and having to email to me. So if I know what that software, you know what the software is, email me. So if I knew what it was, you may be able to purchase it, because I don't know what well, didn't they have when we did the uh, handbook, the town handbook? Didn't they have, that's what she, yeah, that's at one point they had it out there and you could actually look at the. Look that's, at it. that's the software that Rebecca was yeah. referring to. Look, does that have her email? I'll see if I can find something. Yeah, I'm just curious. Oh, okay. Craig Benson might know. Well, yeah, he may not because she, you know, she did it. So, yeah, yeah. Um, but certainly, you know, there's ways. So I don't know how the select board feels about it if you. Are, you know, I mean, we certainly can make it work. Find someone, you know, maybe Kelly. I bet Kelly knows how to do Facebook Live, but I don't know. She's sitting here holding her telephone. You know, I don't really get that part. How I'm going to stream it? But um, certainly, I can. If you think it's something an avenue, the majority of you think it's an avenue we should pursue, then I'm, I'm happy to pursue that. Right. Well, I don't think it. it you know. I, I came in at probably the, the most difficult one, which was the last one, which, you know, the state said, hey, there's a river quarter to put on top of that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was literally like, how many meetings did we have, Mo? Oh, Just okay. trying to sift through the river corridor piece, not alone the town plan. And, right. You know, because it was all the dwellings that fell within so many feet right. of the river right. and what we were right. going to do. And, and I mean, we, uh, I don't know, three months easy on just back and forth on that. Like almost every meeting. I mean, to the point if you know, yeah. it's very tiring than doing it. I can ask this one Kelly is if she knows how. This is a lot easier innocuous. than the last one. Yeah. Yeah, I can. Um, I'll ask Kelly if she knows how to Facebook Live. I'll just walk through the process with Kelly, ask some questions. She probably knows some. Probably some of these. Probably the kids could teach me. Teach us oh, I'm, I'm probably yeah. asking my daughter tonight. She Captcha. C A P T C H A. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so we'll look into it and see if we find we can do it without it being overwhelming, then we'll do it. If not, it doesn't sound like anybody hears all out more over it. Um, so obviously you've got the Danielle, Mowry, Jeff Gilman. This is just really information about, it comes to us from the, you know, public utilities over PSV. Um, really not much we're going to do about it or can do about it. This is just kind of your FYI. Uh, there's pictures and all that in here. Tim has given you the update on the, um, the project. Wait, on that, on that solar project, I didn't see a certificate from the Not yet. It says in the letter that I think this is. They probably are starting down the process because they haven't come. Um, oh, here it is. They're preparing to file an application for their certificate of public good. So this is kind of the first part. They just kind of they have to put out. You can see the whole list of who needs to get the information. Right, I saw that. Yep. Yeah, yeah, just kind of let me know. I, I'll tell you once it gets to the PSB. Oh, the rubber stamp there. You can't do anything anyways. 
So well, you well, you no, can. I mean, not really. If the town pass an ordinance, you could. No, no because no. the no? BSB, no, the state gave them all. They sure. Are, yes. They're all powerful laws. You can't. We tried to get it so that when they were taking comments, because we wanted towns to at least be able to say, hey, you need to screen that or you need to do this, that. Mm -mm. The state said negative. So I don't even surprised they even tell us that's happening, to be honest. All the appointed officials that are in the they make a decision and they're disappointed. That's true. The other thing I gave you back. Sounds was, like a fair system. Yes, your updated list of board items, the ones that we started with, so I hadn't done that in a while, so I updated that. That's it. That's all I have, unless you have questions. The, uh, is that fiber you ran into today? No. No, so we ran into um, sewer and um, well, I think storm water. Well, concrete that they're working underneath. So Isn't that a we hit the sewer pipe. sewer pipe and stormwater. And water actually hit all three things. So um, that's why they're still there doing the work. But um, so, but, no, they're not. I, at last conversation, no utility is what they hit with. Well, wow. they hit water, sewer. One was that big piece of concrete they're working on there. Well, some of it's just in the road because some there's some weird stuff about the road this how they re bury. Well, if they're over near the telephone, there was the telephone um, telephone company and they say the ball met, and there was an old telephone. Remember, there was a uh, payphone. Thank you. There was a payphone there, and so they were talking about that uh, last week or so. So I don't know if that was the area in which they were in. <laughs> I don't know. If you brought that up to the kids nowadays, they'd be like, what's I that? Know. I know. Yes, I told my kids that. They were on the phone. phone and so anyways, no. Not, they didn't hit any that I'm aware of as of. Why didn't they just get the hell out of their way and work, go to work? I don't know what it is. They yeah, it sounded like they had a rough day of going at it yeah, today. With, I don't know what was on this yeah, lab. I can ask. Yeah, they mix some utilities. So they were working under a big piece of, working under one big slab of concrete. I mean, that's. I'm glad that my company is not in the utility work because once you open that up, it's just a can of worms. It, like I fixed my uh, my own water line hook in, I don't know, six, seven, eight years ago I when I had that with Bill and I had it all digging. dug up, Hart did it for me. And there was like, I'm not kidding, there must have been like six different black tube water lines running all over like everywhere. And they weren't the same ones. You know, it's just, you dig in the ground, there's all kinds of stuff, yeah. you know, true. where people said, ah, eh, it was buried. Yeah. 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 I mean, there's tubes for years, and they're like, hey, what's that for? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, you got the that. Yeah. We've dug in front of there a couple times, so I'm not there aware. I don't know what they got there, but um, we have dug there twice so far. Hmm. Not, yeah, it's never, not it's not time easy time. digging yeah. underground. You never yeah. know what you're going to run into. Sure enough. So I don't deal with that. You're good. Mm -hmm. Anything more for Therese or select board oh. meeting minutes from wait the. Wait a second. Oh, I'm the way. oh okay. okay. I was like, I saw it. He's like, I'm like, we <laughs> wait. <laughs> select board meeting minutes for the 13th. Yeah. Do we have any issues with those or are we good to make a motion to approve them as written? So moved. Okay. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Other communications? So you got a variety of things in here. Some fun pink paper, the solid waste board, you got conservation commission, uh select board. Planning. Yeah, I know. Well that was that was Kelly. She I D T was running delinquent utility and tax notices and all of a sudden we hear the printer and she's like, Oh, I'm like yeah. And I said it's just one, one set of the things. Make sure you're still paying attention. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, I, I know last know. time you were talking about the easement on Pleasant Street. Yes. It was Dave Bergeron's. Talking about Dave Bergeron's. Well, I remember there was something else part of the. 
SMS on the bill of due piece. Remember oh, that they were yeah, going to need yeah. to access I haven't and heard back from we were going to have to sell them. I haven't heard back from the lawyer. Something yeah. like that. Okay. We were going to have, yeah, we're going to have to do a quick claim deed, I think, but I haven't heard back from the okay. lawyer. I thought I did have a resident, um, uh, Dave Bergeron, came in because there's a long culvert and then if it comes out on his property and then it was ditched when it was put in like all the way to the river and it's like flooding his yard. And so I asked the Chris. The culvert comes from the school, right? Yeah, yeah. And I asked Chris Bump about it and he actually found plans from like 1932. He's like, I think this is us. I'm like, hmm. yeah, this is the best news I've had in my life. all <laughs> you, buddy. And he's like, what's going on? So I said, well, here's all his pictures. Here's his phone number. I'm like, so I Who owns it? Dave Bergeron. So I said, oh. Dave. Oh, the state might. I said, you could take this up with the state. No. <laughs> I said, thank yeah. you. It's, it's all the storm water comes out of the. Yeah. And the people know because we headed that to the school. Yeah. And the trailer park. And from the head end of the culvert to the school, to the head end of the culvert was on the road. Yeah. It's only about a six inch drop. Yeah, it's it's funny. There's a lot yeah, of you know, the sun snow. Yeah, yeah, the clouds are parting a little bit. I know. I hope out. they stay there. But they, um, but anyway, so that was it. And, and okay. no, I've not heard back from Joe McLean about the about the easement. I was thinking that easement, but um, no, I haven't heard back. All right. Anything new and exciting at the solid waste facility? What was that? We'll get into it later. I'll get into it later. Okay. Oh, we should talk. We can talk about that in public session. That the, yes, the minutes. It was in the newspaper about the BRTS board, and obviously, just like Lisa does a lovely job of us, somebody takes their minutes. There is the chair. Their select board is in Asia, and so he made an unfortunate comment. Uh, about um, people, you know, not being happy with the customer service there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you know, it just about lit my hair on fire. And same thing with Jan Bartle. Here is a woman who is trying to do all sorts of stuff, make all sorts of changes. She's been there six months. <clears throat> We've had COVID. They're essential workers, and then a board member insulting them in the newspaper. Who's not even in the country? Who's not even in the country? Yeah. And it just, it was so unfortunate. Uh, obviously, you know, Jen came up, gave me the thing, I read it, and I had suggested that she write, well, write to one of the other board, that there's a David Barker, maybe, who's on the Solid Waste Board, who's also a select board member. And I urged her to write to them, uh, to write to him, because it's a fellow select board member. And, you know, it, it's so hurtful. These guys are working. She has three other employees. They're they're designated, you know, in COVID as as you know workers that we they're necessary. So here they are, bus getting yelled at, and then someone had a problem with um, food scraps. Well, let's just talk about food scraps. We can't do a lot of things because of COVID, but the Vermont moved ahead with allowed having having um, Vermonters start bringing food scraps. Well, what they also did was they said at the same time that haulers do not have to pick up food scraps. Well, that's the issue so this is a bunch of people coming to the transfer station. Jen had done her due diligence. She looked at pricing for two different outfits. She got containers. Well, I'm sorry that maybe her crystal ball was broken. She had no idea how many people were gonna bring food scraps. So she did ask some people very nicely if they would mind taking their food scraps home and freezing them because they could keep them for another week. And she even went and got other trash containers put. They were um, for another day. It was a Thursday afternoon. Yeah. They're, they're all, they had everything full and they were getting picked up on Friday morning. Yeah. And they were bringing two more containers. So she, this is what. They yeah. didn't say down there that they should have gone to Jen to find out the true story of what really happened. And these people that got upset about it just dumped it on the floor and walked out. So here is a hot day. We're having these 80, 90, 100 degree days. You're in that facility. That building is warm anyways. And people were so self-whatever that they couldn't, or entitled, that they couldn't take those things home 
or a weight or she put out some extra barrels and they dumped it on the floor. So she had to clean up waste that was on the floor. So you know, I'm sorry, if I was doing that in this heat, I might have been curt with someone. I'm sure she was not. But she, all she did was ask them, could you maybe take it home and freeze it, then it won't smell and bring it back tomorrow or the next day. So she, and she doesn't know how much, who knew how many people were gonna have uh, compost and how many people were gonna bring it there. Well, it's already become a, a very large issue in Vermont yes. because there's a lot of solid waste companies that are not taking right. um, the product. And so it's coming there and the cost right now, her estimated cost is $12,000 a year. And, and, and she's not even sure. And right now, um, you know, she's going to speak to the BRTS board in August because her and I are talking, you know, we've been working out budgets and rates. We, we need to charge to dispose of that. Right now they're charging $2 a gallon in, in, in random. And so we're trying to, you know, she's doing the best she can. She also is on a, as tight of a rotation as Grove Vermont is gonna, can give her right now. Uh, we're in a contract because they were the cheapest price at the time. Now Casella has gotten into it where they were contracting out. Now they're kind of bringing it on board. But we've already entered into contract with Grow Compost because they were cheaper at the time. But she's doing all she can. And, you know, so it's just a little frustrating that people, you know, we didn't know, she didn't know, nobody knew how many people were going to compost, how many people were going to bring in there. Obviously now she's trying to find a good way to deal with it. We don't need to have a problem with bears. That other facilities are having big problems with bear. So, we're, you know, I just was a little disheartened and angry, frankly, on her behalf. That, you know, so I did encourage her to reach out to the South Royalton Select Board and, you know, ask them to, you know, come on, get the facts. And, in my opinion, they owe her a public apology, her and the staff. Well, unfortunately, there's. There's individuals that are in the town and connected with the select board that still have vendetta over the free table yeah. and things mm -hmm. that they can't let go. Yeah. And any opportunity that they get to poke at her, they're going to do it. Yeah. And they're and they are doing it, and it's not fair. And it's not fair. I, I, and I don't know why they're continuing to do this. It's, I thought the, the comments. I mean, when you put in minutes like that and reporting, you try to stay away from personalities. And yeah. And the comments are usually effects. over, you know, macro, yeah. not micro. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. This was in the paper last year? Yeah, it was in the Herald. Yeah. I haven't read it yet. Yeah. 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 Uh, it just it went too far. It just went yeah. more into personalities. Yeah. And in actuality, in our new agreement, the uh, sweat boards are not to be involved in this. It's supposed to be the board members. Yeah. Well, one of the comments was it's the sort of the raw sweat board is going to be needed in the before the next summer yeah. waste. They want to put it up to town on their boat. I mean, they're micromanaging. Right? Yeah. And it's difficult, too, because I said, well, let them meet, Jen. They can do whatever they want. I will say that one of the gentlemen in the paper, one of the board members who's on the BRTS board, said, hey, you know what? Part of it is our fault because we weren't as participating, good participating members. So, and then however he meant that, I don't know. I don't know the man. Who we didn't have any members for three months. Yeah. But so, you know, some of this is just going to take some time it is. to get through and figure out. I mean, collecting food scraps. Who, who has any idea how much yeah. food scraps are going to come in? Yeah. It's no different than going to the grocery store right now and trying to figure out, you know, if you don't accept uh, a paper bag of how you're getting your food home. You know, I yeah. mean, it, it's taking a little bit of time for people to figure this stuff yeah. out. That's true. And yeah. it's not going to happen overnight. And, no. And then, and then, you know, when you get people that higher levels that shouldn't be competent and things like that, yeah. that you know are and poking it, at it, it's and it's hurtful. You, know, you got people working oh yeah. in very hot conditions, doing the best they can, and and in tough times. COVID, obviously, they're still very busy. There, she's still doing seven, eight, nine thousand dollar days, which right. are more regular, which were unheard of before. And now, I mean, they're doing a, a heck of a business, and she. You know, and the hours are shortened, which makes sense because they need time to clean up at the end of the day. And I so do it think, just takes a little bit of courtesy. You know, I feel like that was what was. I do think that there's not not only area folks that typically don't bring their waste here that are taking advantage of it right yeah. now. Because Saturday when I went, when I was driving by the the interstate, there was two trucks that came from the north 
that were stopped that pulled out behind me as I went by, and they were clearly loaded with trash. Mm -hmm. You know, so and they, they came down from at least Randolph, right? Yeah. So Randolph. We're one of the only places with a scale. Anybody can cross that scale, but they got to pay the going rate. Well, I'm just thinking at that point is you know, it, it tells me that people are driving the distance to bring it there for a reason. Yeah, which probably is it's cheaper or you know and, and it's good we have to charge actually, more than they have to charge more we're right? actually right in the money i think part of it is the fact that the facility looks so nice the people are user friendly and but that we you know the numbers are actually very much in line with a lot of people with jen and i have been doing this but because we've been looking at the budget because in the past few years uh, they passed budgets with a high revenue that they haven't been making they were spending the money but not breaking it in so Jen and I have been looking at that. She's cut $50,000 out of that budget. She's curbing overtime and, you know, it's, I just feel like people need to take a hard look at what's going on in the world and, and you know, give them a break. Their service, it's a service in there. I worked on that three ago. Yeah, you did. Three days. Yeah. I had nothing but compliments from most people. I didn't. That's good. Anytime I've ever been there, I've never. Other than, you know, we had some times there for a while when COVID was new, where everybody was cleaning out their houses and there was a pretty lengthy line there on yeah. weekends, but well, now it seems to be back to more normal. Well, and so no, no, but I'm saying, you know, I, I haven't seen any signs of, uh, you know, bad uh, customer service or wow. if anything, I mean, it used to be the other days, you know, if you brought your trash at noon, say around noon time later in the day, I mean that that um, the, the storage hanger there that used to be chock full of trash. You know, mm -hmm. you know they yeah. they do a pretty good job of trying to load it onto trucks, and it's, I mean there literally used to be trash. Right? I mean you couldn't even back your vehicle in because the trash was all mm -hmm. you know well, hanging out of the yeah. hanger at that point. I, yeah. I think they're doing a pretty good job. I will say that I you know, so too. there's always better you can do at, right. at anything. And it's hard too. She's been and, there six but, months, and yeah. we've been doing COVID. Come on. I think it's yeah. a personal thing. I think so but, too, unfortunately. Yeah. But anyways, Let I just go. Now the sun's attacking me. Thank you. I will. You'll have to I'll move over. You go back over there, clouds. That's right. You'll have to yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll just pass out a minute. And Which just, one side? You know, when I fall down, just somebody take over and. I don't care your turn. Yeah, exactly. Well, we've got some. All right. Other business. That's right. I got You had other business. Dave, you want to go first? or? Uh, you got a bamboo on the corner of Dunn Highway 6 and North Road and down the street. The slash and edge. You see Richard could drive up there and wrap it all. Is it something that we normally get with the roadside mower when we do roadside mowing? If you do, you don't do not and down because that bamboo grows so fast. And if you went up and knocked it all down about a month ago, it's all up. Where is it? You have to drive out into the north road to see if you can So it's down. a safety issue. Town right? Highway 6. Town Highway 6, Christian Hill. Yeah. Christian Hill and North Road. And yeah. North Road. Here's a pickle over push it down. Okay. <laughs> well, what they need to do is dig it out. Yeah. Do you, think it, do you think that you could dig it up, root and all, and just dump it down? I mean, just turn the soil? Is that was an endangered species? I don't, I mean, not endangered. Just invasive. Oh, invasive? Species. I was like, wow. No, it's invasive, and yeah. uh, I don't think you can ever get rid of it. Okay. They make that chemical in the river, but I don't think we have the excess. It'll, like, um, it's off our main pond. Well, and the, sometimes well, you can, you know, early fun. spring, if you, like, put, like, a heavy-duty tarp or something over, you can... Kill it or delay it because we put it in there. Because the roadside, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so okay, I'll but it, if it's a safety issue, then it should be addressed. Well, we have several, we have several issues because the road we haven't had the, I've had multiple calls and I had Kelly put something on Facebook in front porch form day just letting people know that the roadside mower he's you know, we have a contract, he's broke, you know, he needs to get a part. It's going to get done. I realize people are not happy, but it's 
the state and other towns started just when we did, July 1st, because that's when they had money, just like we did. So maybe next year we can get him to do a week in June and then the rest in July, I don't know. But he has a little bit of a breakdown. He's hoping to be here in a couple of weeks. We did give him until August 10th to complete the contract. So hopefully he's he's here. So we did know that Richard did a little mowing in a couple places. And, and thank you to people who have. There's some people who've just gone out and mowed or weed whacked near their house to help with visibility uh, coming out of their own driveway. And, and we certainly appreciate that. So. Yeah. Oh, neat. Oh, I didn't know that. It's good to know. But we appreciate when people have done it, and we haven't forgotten about it. We're just waiting for the contract. And I didn't want to add in items. I just wanted to bring it up, and then if we want to go further with these, we can add them as a rolling, you know, an agenda item. But just following up with the with the town-owned property alcohol policy, I guess is. You know, there, in the past, there has been events that have happened in this building, um, as well as in some other sections of town. You know, do we want to move? The way we've been doing things isn't correct. So, it, you know, right now, if somebody wanted to rent the town hall and have right. alcohol here, they wouldn't be allowed to. Right. Yeah. Um, even though in the past we've allowed that, but technically the policy yeah. wouldn't state that. So, do we want to, a consensus as board? Do we want to? move this to an agenda item and talk about this more on either potentially um, amending the policy to include maybe certain places of the town or do we want to you know just leave the policy the way it states with no alcohol and just move forward knowing that you know you couldn't do it here or couldn't do it at the band shell or, you know yeah just um, in case people want to have weddings here is that something you're interested in Really, whether it's a time thing. If you don't want to do it, I'm not going to spend the time updating. We'd have to update our facility use policy and our um, open bottle, open bottle, open container policy. Excuse me. So because the league, really the league weighed in, and yeah, you know, you saw the information that basically says yeah. that yeah, you know yeah. that right now we can't grant an individual yeah. access to views on. So before we spend any so. time in the office working on it. I just want to know if you're interested. I I think uh, we've got enough going on. And while that's important, some people I think these other things are more important than what we've done. We need to take care of them. Lindley? I want to have a strong yeah. At least now we know the rules. Yeah. I think we got to put it on the back of the road. I think that's you know, no, that's I fine. I just figured we. The question that's that I have is when you're looking at the ordinance as it exists right now, yeah. if a prop like if uh, on the over the bar, if they wanted to have an outside event at the bar, with all the restrictions that parking and equipment control puts on uh, an event like that, is that allowable? If as long as they're on their own property, property, yes. yes. So, that's why we you can so approve that's a, that's a private we can yeah. approve that event as long as it's on their property. Yeah, and just yeah. that's why you have the outside consent. Just like the white church or the white church wants to have yeah, right. and they have their conditions. Yeah. Yeah. It's as long as it's private property. That's how Tessie's babes, they all had outside consumption permits yeah. and, and that because it was private property. Mm -hmm. So it's just right now like if somebody want to rent this for a wedding we'd have to yeah. inform them that it's good currently you know dry. you wouldn't be allowed to bring alcohol nor could you serve it here yeah. so i'll just add it to the list of what's pending the, stuff the rental, uh, policy right now? Is, is i think it, it said i think it says they can't have alcohol right now so um but we so i'll just put it on that list of pending kind of shoot it out there sure. so we don't forget about it but it's not a high priority just figured we'd talk about that while that was fresh. Um, and then I got two more things. So one is, um, yeah, I'll do that one first. So, and, and a lot of them popped up this weekend, and there'll probably be a lot more of them here between now and November 5th. But, like, in the past, when political signs have popped up on town or state right away, is usually the town or the state comes through and takes them out and disposes of them. Now... Currently, with 
currently with our we don't have a policy. we don't have a policy in place so we'd have to go through the yeah the we, state statute which basically yeah. says that oh, yeah. um, it says that they would have to get permission yeah it says that right now it's that's just for town property right yep now. yeah um, they did it on the So, yeah, they did it on the corner up here, which is town property. Okay, so, that, so we're not talking about on the property. No, we're not talking about no, private no, property. town property only. Like, yeah. like you'll see the state, like you'll see the district if someone puts one. I don't know. Right away, not town property, town right away. If state right away. like usually yeah. you'll see on the state right away areas if someone puts a sign somewhere, you'll see that they'll stop and so, pick and, it and throw it in the truck. Yeah. Because they have a rule. There, there says signs may not be located within state highway rights of way. Or attached to a state or town sign post or guardrail they have their own rules but it says for for town since you do not currently have a policy on this um, it basically says that um, political signs may not be banned altogether but obviously they may be regulated um, and it says that if a town hasn't adopted one then they should supposed to ask the select board for permission um, one of the things they said here is if the board has not adopted a rule or a policy, this is right from the Secretary of State's website, then each candidate must ask the board for permission to place a sign. We strongly suggest that it will be easier for all involved if the select boards adopt a clear policy. And it says right here, the policy can be short and sweet. We suggest that the board consider the following. A clear statement of where on public property signs will be allowed or that no signs will be allowed on public property. If it's the latter, if you choose that no signs will be allowed on public property, it says you can stop right there. So that's your policy. Otherwise, you have to talk about a reasonable time, a reasonable limit on the number of signs per candidate or issue, a reasonable duration, a size. So, so they give us some guidance here. So if you want policy we have guidance obviously the easiest way is to say no go on town property what's interesting is they in there i thought i heard you say that we're talking about the state it's the right of way and we get to the town is the public property yeah it's we we never i know it's funny you have to read the whole thing it just says obviously and it's a violation of criminal law to put any a sign or any sign actually on a utility pole in vermont um, Town, on town highways, temporary can, campaign signs may be displayed for a period of not more than two weeks within the town's highway right-of-way because they are exempt from the state sign law. Um, and then it just says enforcement on town highways is a responsibility of the legislative body. So you can adjust to all of it, um, address it through a policy if you want one. Otherwise, every time we're going to pick these signs up, Hold on to them, someone calls, we'll have to send every single one of these people individually to the select board that wants to put something on public property. So my advice would be make a policy of it. Then it's short and, and sweet. And I think in the past, in the past, we we have treated it just like the state <coughs> where if, if they if they come, you know, whatever, after the weekend you see them pop up, the road crew would go out and pluck them off and take care of them. But the thing is we don't really have a policy for that. Yeah. But they're still not legal because nobody asked us for permission to put them there. So, I, you know, at, at some point there's going to be all kinds of them everywhere. And I just, I saw a bunch pop up this weekend. So I figured, well, we probably ought to. We should. Before we pluck them, we got to find out if we, what yeah. we have for and you should do powers or no powers. And you should do it because we've got the primary coming. which yeah. So we might as well get it done. So at least you will have missed the, what's our next meeting? August 10th? August 10th? Is August 10th yeah. our next meeting? In the primary the 11th but yeah so you will yeah. miss it then but at least it'll be in place for november yeah. so i guess what's your consensus no signs well the other thing too is you know do you i mean we'll call them put i mean any i guess you could probably link anything to a political sign but you know we we you know you and i would say political signs are more we should someone be. running for office right but they could be other signs it could be um they're you know, they could be signs based on um a uh, piece of legislation that's getting ready to be coming up or, yeah. or a movement that's in place or whatever, you know. We um, have, they're defining it as temporary campaign signs, but I think we would have to define campaign signs in the right. policy. Because again, I mean, if you allow one, you got to allow all of them, right? So it's kind of a either all or nothing. 
And I know on our end, you know, talking with the road crew, that, you know, the pain in the butt part is, well, one, if you go to mow that area, you're gonna pick them all up. And then at that point, usually just throw them out anyways. But two, I mean, has any campaign ever in the history gone back out to collect them all afterwards, you know? <laughs> so it's not like they're running out there to pick them back up to take them home, so. Yeah, so we would have to define. So would we, would we like to put something on the agenda next time and then um, Therese can work up the, and again, Therese had said it doesn't have to be a very long policy. Well, it can be very short, one paragraph or. If you're, if, well, I guess here's, if you, it would be helpful to me, so I don't waste time on this, if you would tell me. If you're all just want a blanket, no, that's going to be a lot quicker policy mm -hmm. than me putting in all the specs. So if I have an idea what you're looking for, I can it'd be just easier. Well, I think it's very easy to interpret. No, no yeah. right. Mm -hmm. If you've got 17 criteria, they can all be interpreted. And somebody has to do the interpreting. And then it becomes uh, if, if you get one person permission and someone else comes and you don't give them permission, you know, it becomes yeah. a. You well, know, I think it looked at you know, like if the Census Bureau comes to the room to stick a sign. That's are, different. Are promoting, you know, signing up for the census. What's the process for that? Or, or right. Or there was one a couple of months ago where it was advertising jobs. Yeah. You know, those are those jobs fall jobs under zoning like regulations. That. But I read the zoning today, and you don't define political campaign signs in the zoning regulations. So if you do a separate policy, we can make sure to incorporate that maybe when we do the zoning. But those signs are fine. And I think what we need to define is. No political campaign signs, but I think we need to define exact. Is that a movement? Is that a, you know? I think we need to be clear on what. The and then it gives is. it gives our employees the power to. Yeah. As soon as they up. see one pop up, they can feel free to pull it out of the ground, throw it in the truck, rather than let's say if Alan grabbed one and someone accused him of, you don't like that person, so you've been taking them all off. Yeah. Right. Then you know it gives that, and we don't really have the policy, but they didn't get permission. You know, it's kind of a. Well, we don't want to be responsible for mailing them all back. To no. Stuff. No, what we used to do is we picked them up and hung on to them, and people, they're expensive. People would come and get them. People would come and get them. We hung on to them. Yeah, we, we hung on to them and said, if you want them, come get them. We but this would be easy. I mean, I don't know how we'd get the word out there. So we can do it on Facebook, you know, from Orchard. But a white person pitch his sign and word would be out there. But, it, it, but at least it gives Alan and AJ and those guys. As soon as they see something, they don't have to feel bad about just pulling it, throw it in the truck, and move on. And if someone questions them, because there might be someone say, hey, why did you move that, or why are you taking that sign? Say, listen, our policy states no campaign signs or whatever, and sorry, but, or, or if you'd like to pick your sign up, it'll be at the... Yeah, we'll say they'll whatever. be there for 10 days. And it'll be at Teresa's office, yeah. you know, all piled up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. Are we going to say town uh, property or town... I think both. Well, okay, because you just talked about roadside one. That's not kind of property, it's just private. Yep, I'll make a note. And town highway right away. Okay, thank you. All right, so that takes care of that one. The other one would be um, what, what our feeling is for the board meetings, you know, just. You know, at, uh, you know, August 1st, the, um, the governor has, I wouldn't, wouldn't say things change too much, but I guess it depends on your interpretation of it. My interpretation of the new mandate would be because he used and and not and or, I, I interpret it as if come August 1st, if you are in a public, inside a public place of gathering, then you would be mandatory to wear a face covering. But if you're outside, as long as you can keep your social distancing of six feet or more, then you don't have to wear your mask. That, that's the way can I interpret it. Can you read it again? It. I printed it out for you. Would you please read it? I thought it was the only place you could be socially distanced. And then the only, thing I, the only thing I had a problem with is like, you know, if we're all sitting here and we all have masks on, nobody's ever gonna hear half the stuff coming out of us. <laughs> At that point, would we better just go back to Zoom? Um, but if, we cut. I printed it out. So, we're just so right it. now it says um, masks or cloth facial coverings required in public wherever in public wherever close contact is unavoidable. As of Saturday, August first, twenty twenty, Vermonters shall wear masks or cloth facial coverings over their nose 
and mouth anytime they are in public spaces, comma, indoors or outdoors, comma, where they come in contact with others from outside their household, comma, especially in congregate settings, comma, and where it is not possible to maintain a physical distance of at least six feet. And where it is not possible. We, we, we are so, so I guess, you know, what is, how, and it, on the, is it, you print that right from the governor's website? Because the one I looked at, there was, there was an and in there. Oh, there yeah. And, and yeah. we're public distancing. Right. So, I mean, what, what is your interpretation of that? Do we feel fine with staying how we're doing things? Or do we need to change that? Um, I feel fine doing things the way we are. If somebody is, wants to wear a mask, then we feel it's a need to do it, and they can. The public, I, I do believe that we'd have to wear masks. I think you would in between when you were speaking, yes. If we had to be, we would try, obviously try to push ourselves way back here and we would try to set people out in six foot right. standards. They could also stand on the, there there. or in the balcony. That's a great, I forget about the balcony. So we can certainly social distance, yeah. Um, but yeah, we would just. Well, I was just thinking like, hand. you know, the acoustics in here is terrible to begin with, so. <laughs> and Mo's hearing is not good. So, you know, anytime, you know, if we got anything in front of our face and, and picking up on the microphones and mm -hmm. just in general, you know, sometimes even with Mo sitting where he's at right now, sometimes I can't hear you. So I'm like more watching your lips as you're talking so I can get all the information, you know, because the acoustics is really poor. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah, me at the band show. But I just didn't know, you know, group set, you know, I don't see anything on our schedule that would prevent us from going to Zoom if we wanted to do that. But at the same time, I feel, I personally feel comfortable coming, but you know, how do we feel as a board? Typically, this is our setting, you know, I mean. Um, this is, uh, it personally, I mean, everybody's social distance, it feels, it feels safe. Um, I could hear better on Zoom, but yeah. that, that's my only, that's my only observation. So that's the hard part about the distancing is you can't, we, we could put you more in the middle actually, you'd still be six foot away, maybe we should do that next time. Okay. I just didn't want you to feel on the spot. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I don't, it, it, I don't know that it makes that much of a difference, because yeah. even when we weren't trying to social distance, it yeah. was still hard to hear. Or, yeah. or, and that yeah. may be me. And that's, no, that I think is, so. I think yeah, sometimes it is, but you're pretty good at saying stop. Yeah, can you, can you yeah. say What'd that? What'd you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I mean, I guess the only thing would be, you know, what would we do if we did get a large gathering? How would that look? Or you would, you'd have to do something. You know, would we, like Mo's talking, would we, would we open it to the top? You know, only put, you know, I don't know. Is it, is it to say maybe if we get more than six people over there, then... We open up the top and yeah. go from there, or you could even put the or? select board. Could probably be six feet apart up here, and then you won't hear can... anything up there, though. No, no, and then, we tried that for it. Oh, you tried it. I thought yeah. maybe with the you were out of luck there. Then you could sit back against here. You could put yeah. people here and in the. I mean, I think what is it? You know, we don't normally get a big draw unless we're doing something. <laughs> Not oh, usually. Really, but... it was Pinello Bridge was the last yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. And well, we can throw some roads good. up and see what happens. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. But you know, I, I guess typically we don't really know. Well, we don't really know when people are going to show no, up in no, a mass amount. But. No, I mean then we did. But I mean, yeah, I, I mean I'm comfortable being okay. here. And but, well, just wanted to. But I just want to make sure. Put that in there as well. It's good if you know we bring mass in case there's you know, some large group comes in and we have to find yeah. some of them that we feel like. Of course, absolutely. And hopefully next time oh, it won't be 800 degrees in here. I guess the other thing would be, Therese, could we bring some of um, some of the face coverings that you have in your office? Can you maybe yeah. put a box on the table so that if we do get a yeah. 
a gathering when people don't have them, they have the ability to grab one, I guess. Sure. Yeah. Maybe that we ordered good. some the other day because yeah. I didn't have many, but um, I'm glad okay. I can bring I'll make it. We also start at this point because we visit this every month or so because things change so right. much. That yeah, that's even as you go back to school, like, <laughs> I'm not going to get a choice. I'm going to be exposed to a whole bunch of kids, which now that I'm exposing you to those same people, right? So it's like, so should we put the sneeze guards around your table? Yeah. Lindley, is that what you're saying? So we're going to put Lindley in the party. <laughs> I actually have to call him next week this anyway, so <laughs> we'll be yeah. yeah. with the speaker. Okay. okay, no, I just wanted to see what you we all... put me up there too in that yeah. case, because I also <laughs> will be... That's where you'll be. That's where you'll be. Every so often. Yeah. So yeah. Well, as you close windows, it's true. We just don't know what's coming. So we've kept or maybe we make a rule if it's over 80 degrees, we'll do it from Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, be below 20, below 20 degrees at home. It. So it's got to be between 20 and 80. Is that? Remember that one we had that? It was oh. cold in here. Damn, that was ugly. Awesome. That, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that would be <laughs> At least with the cold, you can put something on. Like yeah, this no, 90 degree uh, yeah. humidity yeah. is like. Well, we're all like so. going to stand up and be soaked to our chairs for great. But. Anything further to come before the board? Anybody have anything else? No? Okay. I won't be here next week. Okay. You won't be here next meeting? No. Okay. So I'd entertain a motion to go into executive session to discuss the evaluation of the town manager as well as one other personal matter for VSA 13, or 313-8. All right. Dave says aye.